So this, this ladies and gentlemen, is a relic from a different era. A gadget that nowadays is considered retro, but back in the day, this was considered the hottest electronic anyone could have. This is Apple's second gen iPod Nano and it released back in September of 2006. Some of my viewers weren't even born yet, and yet we've come so, so far. Nowadays, the iPod is simply an iconic name and no actual iPod is actually manufactured anymore. They don't exist. You can only buy them from sites such as eBay and some third-party resellers. This is partly due to the massive success of the iPhone, which essentially is an iPod, but obviously has cellular capabilities and a ton of other features. I never actually owned one before, and as a matter of fact, this silver iPod Nano 2nd Gen actually belongs to my girlfriend Gabby, and she was kind enough to let me borrow it for this retro review. So guys, join me for this one-of-a-kind blast from the past as we remember and look at just how far we've come in terms of technology. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Alright guys, if you were lucky enough to have one of these back in high school or middle school, you were considered cool AF. If you know, you know. No seriously, I was only 11 at the time, but sadly my parents refused to buy me one because they said the knockoff $40 MP3 players could do the exact same thing. And I mean, they weren't wrong, but boy how I wished I had one. This bad boy had three different configuration options, a whopping two gigabyte version, which is the one we have here, and it started at $149 here in the States, a monstrous four gigabyte variant for $199, and an unbelievably unheard of eight gigabyte version for $249. Nowadays, it's easy to scoff at the storage options, but back then, 8 gigabytes was considered a lot. It is interesting to note, the cheaper 2 gigabyte version was only available in one color, that being silver. Then, the 4 gigabyte model came in silver as well, but added blue, green, and pink. And the elusive 8 gigabyte version was available only in black. So if someone had a black second gen nano, you knew they were bougie. So anyway, let's appreciate and go over the majestic design of this thing. It's tiny and palm sized, making it extremely easy to take with you anywhere, but was also very easily forgotten in people's pockets. And I have heard many stories of people who accidentally washed them in their jean pockets. And remember, this was way before any kind of water resistant devices with IP66, IP67 and stuff like that so that meant it was 100% a goner if you accidentally washed it a quick moment of silence to all of the fallen nanos all right that's enough so of course this being the second gen meant it came with many refinements over the original nano the updated nano featured a scratch resistant anodized aluminum casing just like the ipod mini did and as is pretty clear to see this was the era of the now famous click wheel the click wheel was a touch sensitive circular interface with a mechanical click mechanism that allowed users to navigate through menus, scroll through music libraries, and adjust settings. It combined a touch sensitive surface with a physical button functionality, making it easy to use and provided tactile feedback. The click wheel became synonymous with the iPod and was widely praised for its intuitive and user friendly design. However, as technology advanced, Apple eventually phased out the click wheel in favor of touchscreen interfaces, which were introduced with later iterations of the iPod and eventually became standard on devices like the iPhone and the iPod Touch. The iPod Nano 2nd Gen featured a slim rectangular design with rounded edges. It featured a 1.5 inch color LCD screen, which Apple claimed to be 40% brighter than its predecessor. It was also more vibrant according to Steve Jobs. On the bottom, we have a 30 pin dock connector for charging and syncing. Again, this is way before lightning and definitely way before USB-C. And it also featured a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This was of course the only way to listen to music and this was way before the time of AirPods. So of course, as one might expect, having those headphones with you at all times was paramount if you wanted to utilize this device to its fullest. And what's worse, the iPod Nano didn't even have an internal speaker, which meant you couldn't blast your tunes straight off the device. 
There was a hold switch on the top left to lock the controls, which basically acted as a sleep-wake switch, kind of. And notice on the back we have our iPod and Apple logo and no camera module to speak of. This didn't happen until I want to say the 6th generation iPod Nano when they started to incorporate a camera on the back. Overall, it offered a compact and portable music playback experience with its small screen and sleek design and weighed just under 40 grams, making it one of the slimmest and most portable MP3 players of that time. Lastly, back then the Nano boasted one of the most impressive battery lives of any MP3 MP3 player. It went up from 14 hours of music playback from the original to 24 hours, making it the perfect companion while on a road trip or while working out. Nowadays though, because this is a lithium ion battery, it only lasts me about 3 to 4 hours before it calls it quits, and this is to be expected. These batteries degrade more and more over the years, and after nearly two decades, one cannot expect it to hold its original charge. But hey, in my opinion, it's the perfect little media player to take to the gym for a few key reasons. Namely, it is free of distractions. I know many of you watching are guilty, including myself, of getting lost in the sauce scrolling through social medias or looking at memes in between sets. It not only wastes your time, but others may be waiting to grab that bench or that squat rack next. At least with this Nano, there are no cellular or Wi-Fi capabilities, so you simply choose your song, pop in your wired headphones, and you're ready to rock and roll. While you could download images onto the iPod Nano, you were not able to search for any images because, of course, this is not an internet browsing device. It is really crazy to see just how much tech has advanced over the years. Of course, this little thing has no camera, no internal speaker, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi capabilities, and nowadays, these are all things we come to expect from our gadgets. This blast from the past does hit me right in the feel, seeing as how anyone who was born in the 90s and early 2000s was there to witness the advancement of smartphones and technology in general. Back then, having an MP3 player or iPod was a massive luxury, but now anyone who has a smartphone essentially has an MP3 player, and a camera, and a phone, and an internet browser. I think you get the point. It's just nice to reflect and look at these pieces of history and appreciate just how far we as a society have come. Guys, if you ever own an iPod, let me know how your experience was like below. Before I got an iPhone, my first ever iPod was the iPod Touch 2nd Gen, and it was around the time I was in high school, so I want to say for me the year was 2012 or something. As always, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. I'd love to hear all y'all's nostalgic tales of the MP3 era before the iPhone and modern smartphones took over. Again, I want to thank my lovely girlfriend Gabby for letting me borrow her Nano. And guys, keep your eyes peeled as I have a ton of MacBook Air 15-inch content coming up shortly. Make sure to stay hydrated and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.